this place and I know that he's going to minister to us. Before I even really go uh, to what we are going to uh, look at this morning, I just feel strongly that the Spirit of God is asking me to read this scripture to you. And I'm reading from Luke chapter 12. From verse 15. Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life. Life. I said life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. I said, God said to him. I repeat, God said to him. This very night, your love will be demanded from you then you will get what you have prepared for yourself. This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. Beloved in the Lord, I don't know why God wants me to share this with you, but this is not my test for this morning. Neither is it my sermon for this morning. But I don't know. Because man has an insatiable appetite for things and we are chasing after things. But we are not defined by how much we have. I'm telling you, we are chasing after everything And because of that, man does not even care about his neighbor. Neither do we care about God. This guy didn't care about God in any way whatsoever. He said, and how many of us are chasing after money and after wealth and after possessions and after everything? I mean, we want to have everything. We want to have a good life. This man has gotten the money and now he's told himself that from this moment, I don't even need to work. I'm going to party all night long. I'm going to party all these years. I'm going to go on. I mean, how many of us want to go on a vacation to a place that we desire? I mean, we just really desire that I have to be in this place. I mean, you you just, somebody... I mean, I know some people, somebody once I heard him say that if even he sits in a plane and he dies, that's fine. Oh, yes. Yes. You know, I remember when I was a kid, I was in P4 and I was seriously ill. And I, I, I was raised up in Takuradi, so I didn't know Accra then. I had never come to Accra. And, and I was like, that, this is 1974, and I was in P4. And I was very sick. And the P4, I mean, like, you know, it looks like you don't know anything. You are just about 10 years old. And, uh, but I've heard about Accra, Accra. And I was so sick. And you know, sometimes when you are so sick, you think you will die, even when you were a kid. So I thought I was going to die. And the only thing that I said was, God, won't you let me see Accra before I die? (laughs) Hallelujah. Today I live in Accra. Amen. Yeah, because um, 
many of us we have dreams like that somebody thinks that look if i can really uh just marry and die that's fine at least uh, i'll leave a widow a widower on earth amen some people feel that if they can have one child and they die that's enough i mean people have all kinds of uh but this man i believe that he had a desire to be rich now that's why he was planting all his crops and that year he had uh, an abundance of crops and he had so much that his bonds couldn't contain it so he had to tear them down and rebuild them and talk and then he told himself that i have enough for many years to come and i don't need to work again i just need to have fun how many of us want to have fun hallelujah so he just really told himself yeah i've got everything now and i'm gonna have fun and i'm not going to think about anything hallelujah then you know the, the interesting thing is that as we are sitting here do we realize that god is watching all right so as he was speaking and as he was thinking god was watching you know there are times that we want we think that if we get certain things that's enough that's okay but that's not okay hallelujah and God, as he was doing all that, God was watching. And then God, after he has said all that he will say. Verse 19 is very um, interesting. He says that I'll say to myself, and he's telling his soul. You know, let me tell you something. This man did not tell his body. He was talking to his soul you are your soul you are not your body your body is just really keeping your soul hallelujah and that is why it really amazes me when we spend too much time on this seriously I believe that. And you know, all the wealth and things we are chasing and everything, we are chasing so we can wear nice clothes, we can just have beautiful skin, we can have beautiful hair. Um, we are Ghanaians but, or Africans, but we can become uh, Brazilians and we can become Indians. I don't know. Who, I mean, who, who wants to become an Indian? Hallelujah. Who wants to become a Brazilian? You are a Ghanaian. <laughs> you are a Ghanaian. You are an African. Be proud of who you are. Hallelujah. But we want to be someone else. Amen. And, and, uh, and this surprise. Anyway, that one, I, I won't go there. Uh, no, I will, I will not. Anyway. But then, we, we want to be anything that except what God has made us. I mean, it, it, don't you think it's funny that we want to be anything I mean we are not satisfied with who God has made us and we want to be everything else except what God has made us be proud of who you are hallelujah some people come from a village but they want to pretend they come from Accra please hallelujah you're you, you ask some people, you know, there are people, I mean, if you ask me where I come from, I'll mention my hometown to you. I wouldn't even say I come from Suedro. I'll tell you I come from Bobikuma. Amen. I'm proud of my village. Amen. Amen. There are people, when you ask them, where do you come from? They come from somewhere, Amasaman, somewhere in the bush there. And then they would, they would, they would mention I come from Osu. Hey, please. You don't come from Osu. Hallelujah. <laughs> so you know we want to who are you trying to please we are, i mean you understand what i mean but this man has gotten everything and he said look i'll say to myself you have plenty of grain laid up for many years take life easy buy boats 
Hallelujah. Buy a new, uh, you know, you, you, new yacht, the super yacht. Amen. Buy one. Go and sit on the sea every day in a bikini. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, with, with some, I mean, and the sun is nice. You sit on the sea and you have a swim pool in your boat. And you, you have, uh, I mean, like uh, smaller speed boats. You can just lower them. You can have fun like there is no, no tomorrow. Amen. And he says, yeah, that's, and that's what, he, you know, in his time, um, there were not all these things, so they had another way of really enjoying. But this is what a uh, 21st century mind will begin to think about. I mean, yeah, I'll go to the Bahamas, I'll go to, I mean, Seychelles, I'll go, I mean, like you go to some nice places, hallelujah, <clears throat> and you go and have fun and you go and rest. And do all kinds of things. And then you taking life easy. You just really having all kinds of uh, fun. And God was watching as he was making the plans. And God said in verse 20. He said, this is, uh, but God said to him, you fool. Hallelujah. You what? How would you say that in Ghan? <laughs> what? Olua. Olua. But I thought it was football. They say Olua. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, what would Krobo say? Okay, how many OPS do we have in the house? How would they, I, I can't say. Okwasia. How would your people say? That's, that's what. Sisala. Okay, where, where is uh, Dagati? How would the Dagati say? Obolipa. Hallelujah. I mean, you, you can imagine that. I mean, how many obolis do we have? You know, you, know, you see, you, you're not counting yourself, but some of us sitting here this morning are obolipa. Hallelujah. Because we are fools. That's what we're thinking. We're not thinking about, you know, but just, just be careful and look at what Jesus, I mean, just pay attention. He said, but God said to him, you fool, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then you will get what you have prepared for yourself. Nobody prepared for him. He prepared it for himself. How, you know, we, we need to come to an understanding of the fact that nobody is doing harm to us. We are doing harm to ourselves. We are doing a lot of harm to ourselves. And God is calling us fools. Hallelujah. And that's why I'm saying that I, I'm not exempting myself, but I'm, I'm asking that how many fools do we have in this house this morning? How many of us? How many? What, what, what has been your mindset? You are thinking about, I'll get this car, I'll get this business, I'll get this, I'll get this, I'll get... Your mind is on the abundance of possessions. But Bible says this very... If you go back to verse 15, he says that life does not consist of the abundance of your possessions. Hallelujah. And in defining that, Jesus told that parable. So we need to get to the context. Hallelujah. In defining that, God now gave a parable of what he was talking about because we are and in this day and age all that we want are material things everyone is chasing after something and when you you see when you are chasing somebody some people don't even have cars and they are chasing after maybe picantos hallelujah they are chasing i don't know whether they want to do uber or something 
but they are chasing after picantos. Now they get picanto, and you think they wanted a car, so that should be enough. Then they, they, the moment they get a picanto, the next day they are thinking about something else, a Corolla or something, or maybe Camry or maybe something. They are not thinking about SUVs or four by fours or no, they are not thinking about that yet. But the moment they move up a little bit, now they are looking for an SUV. They do maybe they want uh, uh, Matrix, you know, Matrix four by four. Okay, <laughs> they call it four by four. But if it goes to the bush, it can't survive. Hallelujah. So they look for that one, and when they get that one, they are now they think they are driving four by four, so they are okay. But now. When they begin to drive that one, then they are looking for something else. Man has an insatiable appetite for possessions. And because of that, we forget about those things that are important. But this morning, I want you to remember something. And that's what I'm going to, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, basically this, this, this exactly was not what I was going to talk about. But as I stood here and as we worshipped, I mean, I'm lost without you, Lord. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you, Lord. I mean, I just felt that what is man? What is man? Sometimes we behave as if we are. Until you see someone. Look, beloved in the Lord, you go for funerals. And I mean, you, you, last time I saw um, a, a billboard. Listen to me carefully. Not a poster. A billboard. A very big one. And they have written royal transition i said what is royal about this what is royal about this look go and take the madman on the street who is dead and put that royal there both of them and call them whether one of them will respond so what what is royal about that person that the body that you are really making all kinds of noise about maybe that person that soul is crying maybe the soul is crying let's stop wasting time hallelujah and i'm not saying that don't give people befitting barrels but let's let's be moderate in what we think and what we do hallelujah Let's make life easy and simple. What is important is when we are still alive. If you couldn't talk to the person about Jesus when they die, it doesn't matter whether it's royal transition or uh, presidential transition or premier transition or it doesn't matter. You see, let me tell you the truth. It doesn't matter where you bury them, whether it's Gethsemane or uh, Sakumono or Nsamonpum, it is the value is hallelujah. You pay more money, but you get the same value. Hallelujah. Because you can't bring the person back, you can't do anything about that. And that's what I want us to begin to reflect on. As I speak to you this morning on <laughs> devotion to the breaking of bread. You remember we're talking about four things. What the early church did. And we have spoken about devotion to... Devotion to what? No, the first one was no fellowship. Apostles teaching. And the second one, devotion to fellowship. Now we're going to talk about devotion to the breaking of bread. And the last one will be the devotion to prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is devotion? I just want us to really look at that again. Devotion is feeling or displaying strong affection 
or attachment, strong affection or attachment. We should be, I mean, something. And if we, if, if we are talking about devotion, because the Bible says, just let's go to our key test for this uh, uh, series. Uh, it's um, Acts 2.42. They devoted, you know, they devoted, the people devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, one, and they devoted themselves to fellowship, two, and they devoted themselves to the breaking of bread, three, and they devoted themselves to prayer, number four. So we are, we've done number one, number two, and we are looking at number three. I don't know what you have learned in number one and number two, uh, but I believe that God willing on Thursday, we're going to really review that and we're going to really look at what we have learned so far we can do that on a sunday morning but we can do that on a thursday amen so this morning we are going to look at uh, the breaking of bread and they were devoted to it beloved listen to me carefully i mean there is a uh i mean i will say uh, scholars and theologians really have a lot of discussion about this, uh, the breaking of bread. Some, uh, some think it's communion. Some think it's uh, when they meet in the house, like we come to have a house of peace and we share. And uh, others think it's both, but I'm going to focus on communion. Amen. Hallelujah. Let, let, so that, let's go to um, Luke chapter 22, 19 and 20. So it's, uh, um, we are seeing that they were devoted to the breaking of bread. So anytime they met, and that's why, if you do not understand, that's why we break bread every We take communion whenever we come to a service here. Yeah. Even we, when we come to a prayer meeting, we do it. Because I'm going, to show, I'm going to tell you why we do that. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. And gave it to them, saying... This is my body given for you. Do this. Do this. Do this. I said do this. In remembrance of. So anytime you take communion. You are taking it in remembrance. So communion is not about me and you. It's about we being reminded. Of Jesus Christ hallelujah in the same way after the supper he took the cup saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you beloved we have to come to an understanding of our walk with the Lord Jesus wants us and he says anytime you do this hallelujah whenever you do this can, can you go back to 19 he says <laughs> Anytime you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. So, your focus, that is why I will show you in uh, 1 Corinthians 11, what he uh, basically Paul wrote about it. And why anytime you are eating the Holy Communion, you need to really be careful. Because it, it's supposed to bring you to attention. Hallelujah. Okay, let, let's move on. Now, why should we hallelujah why should or what, what should we remember what should we remember he said it should be in remembrance of me so what do we have to remember about jesus hallelujah let's go to paul uh, paul's letter to the corinthian church first uh, corinthians chapter 11 verse 26 first corinthians 11 26 hallelujah for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Watch this carefully. He says, Jesus said, do it in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. And Paul is saying that anytime you are doing that, you are proclaiming. So you are bringing to remembrance what? The death of Jesus Christ until he comes again. This is too powerful. Communion reminds us of what he did for us. And at the same time, it reminds us of the fact that he is going to come again. So as you live your life, you need to remember on a daily basis that Jesus will come again. He did 
something for you. He paid a price for us all to really be taken from our sinful nature and be brought into the kingdom of light. We were taken from darkness into light. We were taken from the miry clay and we were brought up on a hill. You see, what I want us to understand that Jesus did something on the cross. He overcame the power of the enemy so that we can have life today. As slaves and as people who do, did not deserve, he died on the cross so, so that those of us, or maybe all of us, who did not deserve to say Abba Father can now say Abba Father. We can call God our Father not because of anything we have done, but because of the finished work on the cross. Yeah. Beloved in the Lord, it breaks my heart when people talk about the fact that it's my own body. I have my own life. Who told you you have a life? If he didn't give it to you. If he did not give you a life. Who told you you have a life? What about if he takes. Look. When Adam was created. Who can be Adam for me this morning? Everybody says Joseph. Joseph come and, come and lie down here. They will see you there. Come up here. Hallelujah. This was Adam. When Adam was created, this was Adam. He didn't have a suit though. <laughs> Hallelujah. This was Adam. Lifeless. Lifeless. I want you to understand something. This thing that you see that you polish every day. This thing that you are finding everything to really decorate. Will be one day completely useless. Hallelujah. When it was lying down like this. Listen to me. Listen to me carefully. When it, Adam was lying down like this, when God created it, Adam couldn't move. Adam couldn't do anything. It took God to put something of himself into him. Bible says that he breathed on him. Now, listen to me. How did the breath of God become blood to flow through this? Because Adam was a piece of clay. We, you can, you, you see, uh, the, the kids have something they call play doh, yes. and they can make human beings out of it, they can make anything out of it. Hallelujah! Yes. But they all that they make are lifeless. Hallelujah! And because they don't have the breath of life, they cannot breathe into it, yes. else they would have breathed into it. Hallelujah! Yes. They cannot. So, you, you see. We were like, Adam was like a Play-Doh that has been made into a, 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 like a form of a human being. But it took God to breathe into him. And then, when he did that, he now gained blood, got a brain, got, got a kidney, got a liver, got a lung, got, I mean, I, I don't know what else. He's made up of. Hallelujah. He got bones. Hallelujah. He got what? What? Veins. He got nerves. He got, I mean, he got everything from one breath. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. That is why when you are behaving as if you are your own, I laugh at you. Because the moment God doesn't have to come and cut your leg. He doesn't have to cut your head. All that he has to do is to take what he gave you. And when God takes that life out of him, he comes back to his same position. That is why when you go to a funeral, you see the king. He can be a king. He can give all his kinds of instructions. But the moment God took what he gave to him out, he became a piece of clay. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter who you are today. You are who you are because something of God is in you. Don't walk around thinking that I am who I am. Hallelujah. You are nobody. I said you are nobody. 
If God takes what he gave you out, you become a piece of clay. You can be the chief. You can be the king. You can be the president. You can be whatever you want to be. But what God gave to you, if he takes it back, you become a piece of clay. You are just like that mad man on the street. You are just like any other person. Stop bragging. Stop saying the things you say. Like your life is your own. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I gave myself. I gave myself away. Hallelujah. I said, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I gave myself. I gave myself to you. I gave myself away. I believe that there are people here who have to give yourself away to God so that God can use them. Hallelujah. Because this is a piece of clay until the breath of life came. I don't know when God is going to take his life from you. And you don't know. You see, when he was giving it to you, he didn't ask you for permission. When your mother gave birth to you, you did. Your mother didn't ask you for permission before he got pregnant. Did, did your mother come to you and ask permission to get pregnant? No. God just gave you to your mom, and if God wants to take you, He doesn't need your permission. He can take it when and how he likes. That's why some people die by accident. Others die by drowning. Others die by, by, I mean, in their sleep. Yesterday, somebody told me, he showed me a picture of a pastor. My sister, you know my sister is a pastor. The one I come directly after. She's a pastor in the Methodist church. And she, yesterday I was with her. And she showed me a picture. She said, this is my colleague a woman a woman minister as well she said she slept and in the morning he didn't she didn't wake up again she's gone that's how God wanted to take her did did God ask her permission why do you behave as if your life is your own why do you sometimes talk as if the world is for you why Beloved, why? Every day you take communion, but you don't remember anything. Every day. You don't remember anything. Today. How long has he been there? Probably 10 minutes or 5 minutes. Or, but he's still there. If God doesn't breathe life, Adam could have been a clay up till today. Until God gave life. Listen to me, beloved in the Lord. Listen to me. What you are using. Do you know what amazes me? How could one breath, just breathe in, one, bring blood, bring bones, bring teeth, bring eyes, bring eardrums, bring a brain, bring a kidney, a liver, a lung. I mean, how did it happen? And God gave you all that, including your hair. And you can tell God that, I don't want this one. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Beloved, if we will stop focusing on the unnecessary things, we will be friends with God. And everyone should cherish 
the life that he has today. I'm telling you, someone gave it to you and he can take it as and when he wants. He said, your life will be demanded of you today. Today. And you have no choice because he takes it. You know, and Bible says that Jesus is the only one. He lay it down and he takes it up. You cannot do. I cannot do. And that's why you have to be careful. You have, you have life now, so get up. Yeah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Beloved in the Lord, this is it. I said this is it. This is it. And Paul said, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. Paul wrote and said, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Beloved in the Lord, these are the things you need to remember. What he did on the cross for you, where he brought you to, and you also need to remember that he will come again for you to give an account of the life he gave to you. What account will you give? Beloved, what account will you give? What account will you give? If God would come right now, how have you lived your life? What account will you give? Can we stop for a while and close our eyes and begin to reflect and ask ourselves, if Jesus would come this very moment, what account will I give? Just think about it. Think about it. What account will I, will I give? And ask yourself, where will I end? In heaven or hell? And is that where I want to be? I'll repeat the questions that you need to reflect on this very moment. If Jesus would be here right now and will demand from me what I did with my life, what account will I give? What account? How have I used my life? What account will I give? And if you I don't know if you know or you don't know but if you have thought about it, if he is here, where will you go? Heaven or hell? Where would you want to spend eternity? And what you are thinking about right now, is that where you want to think, uh, what you want, uh, wh where you want to be, or where you want to spend eternity? I believe some of us right now would have to make decisions. If you don't like what you are seeing, if you don't like what you are perceiving, if you don't like where you think you are heading to, Beloved in the Lord, I want you to make a decision right now. You don't have to say anything to me. Neither do you have to say anything to anybody here. Say to God right now. I give you two minutes. Say something to God. 
Because this is not a show. This is not a show. This is life and death situation. This is where you're going to spend your life forever. Man will live on the last time we checked. Life expectancy in Ghana probably is not even up to 70 years. So that means that you will not be 70 years. But where would you want to spend eternity? It's the rest. Are you going to hell or heaven? And is that where you want to go? If that's not where you want to go, make a decision right now and ask God that I give my life to you. It's between you and him. Because if you say it to me, sometimes you turn around and you do things and you say he doesn't see. But the one you are talking to right now, he sees everything. He knows your thoughts. Wherever you sleep, he knows. Wherever you walk, he knows. Wherever you sit, he knows. Whatever you say, you know, he knows. Even what you are thinking about right now, he knows. Make a decision for him. Because that's where you want to be with him forever. So make a decision this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let me continue. Beloved in the Lord, we should remember this. For us to be saved, it cost him something. It was not cheap. It cost the father his son, and it cost the son his life. I said it cost the father his son, and it cost the son his life. You are somebody precious to the Father. And look, regardless of what anybody thinks about you, regardless of what anyone sees you to be, listen to me this morning. God sees you differently. And God's love for you is the same love he has for me. Because the Bible says that he demonstrated his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. So if that is what it means, then it means that that love for the sinner is the same love for everyone. Because he loved the sinner to the extent that he died. Hallelujah. And, and, and the mystery of it is that God Almighty had to become a man. You can't get this one. Listen, God Almighty, the one who created you, has to, in order to save you, he had to become like you. For you to spit on him. For you to slap him. Look, I want you to understand that don't tell me you are a Christian and mess up with your life. Because for you to become a Christian, it doesn't just take your mouth. It cost him his life. It cost him some whiffs at his back. It cost him to die the most disgraceful death on earth at the time. Bible says that cursed is any man that is hung on the tree. He became a curse so that we can become a blessing. He endured your pain so that you can be painless. For us to come. That is what he's saying that anytime you eat the Holy Communion, don't eat it without understanding. Eat it with great understanding. People just eat it. They don't understand. And I'll read scripture to you this morning. Beloved in the Lord, I want you to understand something. It's, it's a little bit scary. 
But I don't think God wants to scare us. He just wants to warn us. He just wants us to know so we can make the right decisions. Do not ever think that I want to go to hell because of some car you drive here. What car do you want to drive? What car do you... You, you car, what do you have? Hallelujah. Somebody has a private jet and he's serving the Lord. You don't even have a bicycle. You don't even have a bicycle. You don't even have... You, I mean, look, your dresses are even limited. And you're still bragging. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10. Look, I want to tell you something. God is not going to take it for granted if you mess up your life. He's coming again. I said he's coming again. And he's coming like a judge. He says, but, no, um, Hebrews chapter 10, 26, from 26. We read it from 26 to 31. I just want you to open, I, I want you to open your eyes. Hallelujah. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left. That's not even my focus. But only a fearful expectation of judgment. Bible calls it a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. People say that, oh, there is no hell, there is no heaven. Let, let me tell you something. If God saved the Israelites from Egypt, Crossed the Red Sea with them. And so they fell like nothing in the wilderness. Beloved, no. No. That the same God will do what he has said he will do. If Sodom and Gomorrah, yesterday I was telling mommy, I was telling the, those, the, the, the evangelism team, in the afternoon, we were, we, we, when we left here, we went to see somebody and then we came back for evangelism in the evening. And when we were driving, I have never seen it in my life. But some people said that it's normal. I said then I'm the bushman in, the, in Ghana because I don't go out so I don't see anything. Me and my, oh yeah, she also didn't know. We were driving in traffic on the Spinkers Road and two girls were walking by the roadside. And one, openly in daylight, one was fondling the, uh, the, the backside of the other one. I'm telling you, I've never seen anything like that in my life. And I'm saying, but two days earlier, we, we were discussing Bible and mommy said, hey, but today it looks like we have Sodom and Gomorrah. I said we have more than that now. And then yesterday we saw this. And we're saying, I put my hands on my head. I said, where are we going, God? Where are we going? When I saw it, I said, how can a woman fondle a woman in the middle of the road? This is Ghana. This is not America, please. This is Ghana. And they want even to make a law on it. And we are even on the street. We are now beginning to, hey! Somebody told me that, oh, uh, 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 this one you haven't seen, go to the mall. I said, I don't have anything at the mall. I don't go there. If I will go there, then I'm going to buy something. But me, what, what am I going to buy? I so, said, me, I don't go there. He said, then you don't know anything. I said, I don't want to know anything. Hallelujah. I was shocked. And I was just asking myself, where are we? Bible says in Noah's time, the same thing happened. In Sodom and Gomorrah, the same thing happened. And the Bible says that in one instance, he destroyed them with water. In another instance, he destroyed them with fire. And he says that, I'm coming again. I'm coming again. Let's move on. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses, the law of Moses, died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think he's saying that <laughs> determine your own judgment? How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished 
who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them, and who has insulted the spirit of grace. Bible says that if you intentionally go on sinning, this is what you are doing. Go back, go back. Let me tell them what God is saying. He says that, no, 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 28, from 28. He says, anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Then he goes on to say that how much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished? Not really uh, disobeying the law of Moses, but doing what? He says, trampling the Son of God underfoot. You put Jesus on the ground and then you walk on him. He says, when you are sinning, that's what you are doing. And he goes on to say that, who has done what? Treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them. Bible says that the blood of Jesus sanctified us. And he says you are treating us an unholy thing. And number three, I want you to remember what your sin is doing to Jesus. It's scary, but we don't pay attention. And he's saying that who has treated them as an unholy thing, the blood of the covenant that sanctified them, and who has insulted? You see, let me tell you how you insult the spirit of grace. Yeah, but if, if, I, if, I, if I do it and I ask for forgiveness of sins, he will forgive me. That's an insult to the spirit of grace. Grace did not come for you to glory in your sin and come back. So people do all kinds of foolishness. And then they come and sit in church. And then they go, Hey, Father, forgive me. Who, which father? Which father are you calling? He says, that's an insult. I am not saying we don't sin. I am not saying you don't fall into sin. But if you intentionally continue without remorse, Continue to do it, and you come and stand there and you say some words thinking that they carry weight. They don't carry anything. Hallelujah. And he says that it is called an insult to the spirit of grace. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 30. For we know him who said, It is mine to avenge, I will repay. And again, the Lord. The Lord. Some people. Who has his people? You and me sitting here. The Lord is saying that he's going to judge us. First Corinthians chapter 6. I won't take too long. I'm going to finish right now. Verse 20. You were bought. Beloved, you are not cheap. You were bought at a price. And I've told you the price that was paid. It was Jesus' blood. He had to be hung on a cross. Don't take for granted the price that he paid. I said don't take for granted the price that he paid. He paid the debt. He did not owe. I, owe I did not pay. I needed someone to take my sins away. Now, now I can sing a brand new song. Amazing grace. Lord Jesus paid a debt. That, that I could, could never pay. Once more, he, he paid 
the debts. He did not owe. I owe the debts. I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Now I can sing a brand new song. Amazing grace. Lord Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. You, you, you and I, there was no way we were going to be able to pay this debt. No way. So he stood in for us. He had to die. He had to go through pain. He had to go through suffering. Bible says that when he was being beaten, beloved, you may not understand it fully. I wish I could really make that rope, that whip, and bring it here. That whip that was used to beat Jesus had metals at the edge. It had bones at the edge. And any time it went into his back, it took part of his skin out. And he had, they gave him 39 of that. So any time that it went, bam, it took part of his skin out. So when Jesus was going to the cross, he was so weak he couldn't carry his own cross. And somebody, listen to me carefully, they made a crown of thorns and pressed it into his skull like this. They put it here and they pressed it in. And the moment they pressed it in, it went into his skull. And he began to bleed. His whole face was bleeding. He was so bloody that he couldn't be recognized. That's how bad it was. Just for you and for me. That's how bad it was. And you live your life like your life belongs to you. It cost someone something. Beloved, if he comes again, He's not going to deal with you like he's dealing with you now. He's not going to deal with me like he's dealing with us now. Anytime you take the communion, that's why the church were devoted to the Holy Communion. Because anytime, if you sin like what? When you come and you see it, you remember. Jesus himself said, anytime you do this, do it in remembrance of me. My pain, my suffering, the challenges I had to go through for you to come to where you are. We take it for granted. And we live our lives like there's nothing at stake. I'm telling you there's something at stake. I said I'm telling you there's something at stake. There is something at stake. And he says, I will come again. I will come again. Don't take anything for granted. Let's go on, please, quickly. I just want to finish quickly. You were bought at a price. Therefore, and today people say all kinds of things. They are walking around half naked. And they call, they say that it's my own body. If you like, watch. If you don't like, don't watch. Who told you you have a body? That's a clay. That's a piece of clay. It doesn't even move me. Hallelujah. It's just the devil has gotten into people's head and they see and they are, I mean, lasting after you. You're a piece of clay. That's how I see you. That's how I see your body. I respect you as a person because of the spirit of God that is in you. But after that, your body is a piece of clay. It doesn't move me. Hallelujah. My body is a piece of clay. That's why I don't, I mean, I'm not saying just walk anyhow, live anyhow. But I'm saying that this body is a piece of clay. You spend too much time on it. Hallelujah. Just make it decent. That's what it takes. 
Therefore, honor God with your body. Are you honoring God with your body? Are you honoring God with your body? Yesterday, when we went on evangelism, someone was saying that, yeah, me, I'm a, I'm a very devout Christian. Hey, devout. That's good. And the person was bold. A young lady who has one child without a husband. And he said he's a devout Christian. Hallelujah. And then as the conversation went on, he has a boyfriend. And he's just messing her life up with fornication. And then they were saying, but how can you reconcile that? How can you reconcile a devout Christian being disobedient to his God? Do you know what he said? she said? You want to know? Yes. Do you want us to put it to a vote? You want to know? Yes. You want? Yes. Do you know what she said? She, said, she asked them. And she, she told the, the, the people, he said that, look, this is 21st century. I said, so 20, God is dead. <laughs> he said, this is 21st century. It's normal. When did the Bible change? To be normal for something in 21st century. I thought you said that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. When did he change in the 20th? And he sits in church. Sleeps in church. Calls herself a devout Christian. But sleeps in somebody's bed at night. And she has the audacity to say that I'm a devout Christian. Wait, Jesus will come one day. You stand before him and you tell him you are a devout Christian. Let me tell you, if you don't know, even me sit standing here, I need to watch my life. Because Jesus said, on the last day some people came. They said, I prophesied. I healed the sick. And they did not say, I did it through Malam or Baba. Or Juju man, he said that I did it in your name. Jesus looked at his face. He said, Take off your mask, let me see. <laughs> Took off his mask. Said, but I never knew you. So, ah, Jesus, what are you talking about? I was the one. You know, you remember the church in East Legon? I was standing there when I speak by the power of your name. Demons begin to flee. Hello? Hello? What your, was your address? What was the name of your church? I didn't know that one. Ah. Hallelujah. Oh, I mentioned the name of Jesus. Everybody mentioned my name. Oh. Jesus said, everybody mentioned. People I don't know even mentioned my name. Some people stand in some places say, I'm Akufado's son. Uh, everybody can say that. But does that mean you are Akufado's son? People, hey, we went on evangelism. And then they asked, uh, where is, where is uh, 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 Karen and uh, the friend? And they asked somebody. Uh, uh, the person said, I go to church. And they said, what church? He said, Kingdom Power and Glory Ministry. Oh, <laughs> He's never stepped in this church before. They went on evangelism the previous week and some people spoke to him. And then he basically got to know the name of the church. So when he saw another group of people, they, he didn't even know where they were coming from. He, he didn't know. But when they asked him, and they said, oh, so I mean, I'm a Christian, I go to church. Wait, wait, what church? He said, I cannot. I, and, and I don't know you. I never know you. I've never seen you there. That's what is going to happen. The fact that you said it doesn't mean that Jesus knew you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, honor God with your bodies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to verse 19. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. Now, let me ask you a question. In fact, I have to, if, if the girl was here this morning, I would have asked her a question. What, if you are a devout Christian, it means the Spirit of God lives in you. 
So when you are sleeping with a guy, where do you take the Holy Spirit? Does he watch? Does he take part? Or he goes away? What do you do? Do you tell Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit, that, you see, I'm a devout Christian, so I know you live in me, but I'm going to sin. So stand at the door. When I finish and I come out, then you come back. Is that what, what it is? Hello? Do you know that we don't think about these things? When you were lying, where was the Holy Spirit? Inside of you. So what was he doing there? Grieving. And you want to grieve him? So that means that you don't have to lie. That means that you don't have to gossip. You know, some people feel that only fornication is a sin. Hallelujah. That's not true. Hello? Are you coming? Where are you? Oh, I'll get there in five minutes. I'm on my way. But he's in church. And the Lord is here. And we have the audacity to sit in his presence and lie. Bible says that you were bought at a price. You were bought at a price. Maybe you don't know the price. It's the blood of Jesus. He had to pay the debt he didn't owe. Because you and I, we owe the debt we couldn't pay. And there was no way we could have paid Beloved in the Lord. We take many things for granted. We take the Holy Communion for granted. But I'm going to end by reading to you as you come to the Lord's table. this morning. And that's the reason we take the communion every day. Anytime we are here, we take the communion. We do not take the communion because it's, it's a show. We take the communion. God said that let the church partake in this anytime they meet. And that's what we do. When we started the church, we were not taking the communion every day. But I got to a point, God said, do it every day. I said, yes, sir. And we began. And that's what we've been doing. Because some people, they, they don't understand why. Week, midweek service and you are taking communion. Yes, we take it every time. Because every time you step in here, we need to remind you that Jesus died for you. He had to pay a price for your life. And one day, you will have to account for it because he will come again. So you can't live your life anyhow. You can't walk around anyhow. You can't go and come anyhow. First Corinthians chapter... 11 and I'm going to end with us verse 23 we'll read to probably I think 30 for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me. Anytime you are doing it, he said, do it in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, beloved in the Lord, whoever eats, the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. You can't eat and drink it anyhow. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body... People think they're eating bread and drinking juice. But he's saying that you need to discern what you are doing. 
you are eating his body and drinking his blood and you can't do it anyhow are you worthy have you prepared yourself have you set yourself apart to do it for those who eat and drink without descending the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves people come to church and they think everything is just like that read your bible and understand what you are doing that is why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep falling asleep means dead and sometimes you are dead but you are alive you are walking around like you have life but to god you are dead hmm. 31 But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. Beloved in the Lord, God loves us. And God has been speaking to us this morning. As Christians, every single day of our lives, we need to remember what Jesus did on the cross. If we do that, we will not live our lives anyhow. The things we are chasing after, I don't have time to go into many things, but the things we are chasing after, the things we are running after, the Bible makes us understand that your life does not depend or it does not consist of the abundance of what you own whether it's health whether it's money whatever it is your life does not consist of that the abundance of how, what you have i don't know what you have maybe you have a lot of money in the bank maybe you have a lot of resources Maybe you have health today, so you can just wake up, go, and come. Do you know that somebody got up today and couldn't get out of his bed? I remember one day, someone came to me and he said, Daddy, I woke up this morning, and I could walk, I could do everything. And I went to the bathroom, to the sink, and I wanted to spit. And the, it, when I tried, it just all fell here. So I looked in the mirror, and I saw that my face has turned like this. And he said, Daddy, I don't know what I have to do. I thank God that I prayed with him. And by the grace of God, it was, he recovered. But I sent him to the hospital. And when he went to the hospital, he said, the doctor said it's a mild stroke. But he never thought he was going to wake up that morning with a mild stroke. But thank God for prayer. God restored him. Beloved in the Lord, when God restores us like this, what do we do with the life that we have? He's still messed up with his life. Today he's not with us. Today he's dead. Beloved in the Lord, don't joke with God. Bible says that to him a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years make a day. I want you to pay attention. I want you to reflect this morning for the second time.